Well, originally F and TI was um, uh, it was a vision of Chief Earl Hill actually to have um, um, a place of training of excellence uh, for First Nations people within our own community that would, could be expanded to include all First, all First Nations people. Um, there were not really a lot of institutions in Canada like that. Uh, the council started it on its own, then eventually Indian Affairs began to contribute money and uh, and actually touted it as, as one of its its its, its, its as, as a success story uh, in First Nations education. And so I attended along with Chief Hill and the councillors and uh, and Bruce Miller, who was the first president of FNTI, to help uh, get it established and to get the government to. Uh, 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 fund uh, the the courses that were taught there. Eventually, there, the province got involved when the aviation uh, school was started, and uh, the Ministry of Education, colleges, and universities also contributed money for the aviation school. It was important to partner with um, um, uh, existing colleges and universities uh, so that the the diplomas and certificates that would be uh, obtained from there would meet the standards of the Ministry of the Education, so they they would be recognized, and our people would have no barriers to employment. Uh, they, they, the arrangement is, is that they lease um, uh, building space in the airport from the Tanganyika Mohawk Council. It's a good relationship. Uh, they've also provided us with uh, computer services. They've done a lot uh, to bring um, to make our community um, not miss out on the technological age to be to be computer literate. They've offered a lot of uh, computer training in the community, and uh, so and, and and courses that that have benefited our people. I think they've graduated more than two thousand. Uh, students and uh, most of those people are, are, are employed. Okay, so for the Public Admin and Governance Program, we delivered the uh, program at three separate sites uh, via video conference. So it was Six Nations, Timmins, and Thunder Bay. We had staff at each of the sites, and they were mentors for the students to assist the students um, with the material or to facilitate any breakout sessions that the instructor had built into the course. Probably the biggest challenge was um, the stability of, of the actual internet feed. Um, one of our locations in Six Nations, sometimes we had issues with the actual feed, which caused the uh, visual picture to go, but the audio would sometimes be choppy as well, and that was distracting for students, so that became a challenge. The other two sites had a more stable internet connection in their actual room and they were able to maintain a strong feed and but it you know frustrated the people in Six Nations to have that choppy audio. Luckily with staff there we were able to compensate a little bit by filling in the gaps where we knew they were. The internet has evolved from basically text and image sites to uh, well amazing amount of things you can do now. Um, but what's happened is our data access hasn't changed. So we have 1980s technology servicing the whole reserve. Um, it's overloaded, it's slow, um, and what that means is that we can't access the services that other places take for granted. <laughs> 